Hey friends, just thought I'd share with you some article I was reading on the old internet here. Uh, it's from the Federalist. I apologize for that. I usually don't read crappy things like the Federalist. But what got me excited about this one is I opened up the article and look at there. It's got this thing about the origin and evolution of birds. That's interesting. And then look over here. I know who that is. That's Kevin Padian. So you know Kevin Padian, right? Yeah. He's a well-known biologist. He's got a number of plaudits to his credit. So he's a professor of biology at Berkeley. He's a fellow of the AAAS. He's a former president of the National Center for Science Education. And he was a witness for evolution at the Kitzmiller versus Dover trial. He's generally an all-around good guy. And here he is giving this talk on the origin and, and evolution of birds. How cool. I wanted to read this article. And then I scrolled down and started reading it. Okay, first thing you'll notice, it's under the category of science. Yeah, right. Uh, so I got into this, and right away you can tell from the title, this is going to be a problem. So, first of all, let's scroll up here a little further. So, um, right away, let's talk about the author. Some guy named Benjamin Dierker. Uh, you will not be surprised to learn that he has an undergraduate degree in economics, a master's in public administration, and is working on a law degree. Okay, that's commendable. There's nothing wrong with those degrees. Uh, but one of the thing is that none of them require any expertise in biology at all. He does love to talk about Christianity in Texas, though. I know a few Texans. They seem all right. But still, this is this is not a good start. Uh, all right, but let's address the title. The title is, Why One-Third of All Biologists Now Question Darwinism. I am shocked at this claim. Unfortunately, Dierker provides absolutely no evidence for it, uh, but he says that current estimates are that approximately one-third of professional academic biologists who do not believe in intelligent design find Darwin's theories inadequate describe, to describe all the complexity in biology. Uh, current estimates? How are, there, how are these estimates made? By whom? Where does that number come from? We'll get to it in a little bit, and you'll see, no, it's it's not a very good number. Um, I suspect, though, that it was pulled from the shiny crease of Mr. Dierker's buttocks because it makes no sense. And why does it make no sense? Because, shock horror, virtually 100% of biologists question Darwinism. That's right. Yeah, Darwin is an old theory. So... Let's get that out of the way right now. Okay, but where is his, where are some of his sources here? They're listed a little farther down. You can see them there. Uh, ben Stein. Okay. His source is Ben Stein and the movie Expelled. Uh, that's not very promising. We also get to a real problem with this article. The title says, Question Darwinism. And here in the second paragraph, we've switched to question neo-Darwinism. Those are two different things. Darwinism is a 19th century theory promoted by Charles Darwin, whereas neo-Darwinism is a more complex theory that emerged in the 1930s, 1940s. So they're, they're rather different things. I suspect that Mr. Dierker cannot tell them apart. Uh, but this is especially problematic given his next paragraph. Look at there. He says defining evolution is key. So he's going to chastise us biologists for being sloppy with our defini definitions. And sure, one general statement about the mechanism of evolutionary, uh, of evolutionary change is that there have been heritable changes in frequency of alleles in populations over time. Fine, we can accept that. This is a fact of evolution. 
It's It shouldn't be questioned. I mean, that's reality. But he also says evolution is common descent of all life on Earth from a single ancestor via undirected mutation and natural selection. Which is, I'm going to surprise you here, also a true statement. Sort of. Okay, I'd quibble, I'd quibble over a single ancestor. It was more like multiple ancestors combining. Uh, <clears throat> and I'd point out that mutations generally are undirected. So there's no point in mentioning that. And I'd also emphasize that there are multiple mechanisms beyond natural selection. Uh, but the thing is, those two statements he has given do not contradict each other. They are perfectly complementary. There are multiple levels of explanation, multiple bodies of facts that have to be addressed. And also, very important here, there isn't a the theory. It's not one thing. It's not a unitor unitary explanation. Uh, evolutionary theory is a complex array of interlinked explanations. And I think that'll become clear in a moment, but it's obvious that Mr. Dierker expects one single overarching and simple form formula to explain all of biology, which he will label Darwinism, or sometimes Neo-Darwinism. And he thinks that biology is in a shambles. Okay. It's kind of like a guy who thinks there's one true law of engineering. And if you can't explain turbulence in a sewer pipe to his satisfaction, that means all the bridges will fall down and his cell phone will start, stop working. Okay, let's get into the meat of his argument. So, this section demanding a new theory. So, he says, The controversial letter to Nature in 2014 signaled a mounting concern, however slow and cautious, among thoughtful professional biologists. Ah... <sighs> That letter to nature is actually split. If you go and follow his link and read it, uh, there's one group of authors that are arguing that evolutionary theory needs a rethink. Whatever that means. I'm still trying to figure out what that means. And another group is pointing out that all the phenomena that the rethinkers don't fit into evolutionary theory already do so. And they do so without any problems. For example, is epigenetics a major challenge to evolutionary theory? How about niche construction? I talk about them both in my conventional undergraduate evolutionary biology course right now. I don't think anyone feels that those two concepts are tearing down the edifice of neo-Darwinism. They're just part of the ever-expanding toolbox that helps us better understand the process of evolution. But those rethinkers have some strange ideas. Like this bit where they contrast their new theory, which they call the extended evolutionary synthesis, with the old fogies standard evolutionary theory. So it's EES versus SET. Okay, so here's what the article says. In the decades since, evolutionary biology has incorporated developments consistent with the tenets of modern synthesis. One such is neutral theory, which emphasizes random events in evolution. However, standard evolutionary theory largely retains the same assumptions as the original modern synthesis, which continues to channel how people think about evolution. I'll come back to that. That's a really weird thing to say. Okay, he goes on to explain the story that SET tells is simple. New variation arises through random genetic mutation. Inheritance occurs through DNA, and natural selection is the sole cause of adaptation, the process by which organisms become well-suited to their environments. In this view, the complexity of biological development that changes the, that occur as organism grows and ages are of secondary or even minor importance. Okay, what's weird about that? Well, hang on a moment. So their gripe is with this version of SCT, which they say is only about random genetic mutation and natural selection. 
that should set off warning bells right there. Good God, they even sound like the creationist caricature here. And I'll give you some examples of creationists saying exactly the same thing. And then they dismiss the work of Kimura, King, and Jukes, who did that stuff on, um, on neutral theory, and they just throw it away as and saying it's simply consistent with SET. But the title of the King and Jukes paper from 1969 was Non-Darwinian Evolution. It's a 50-year-old paper, and the authors were unfazed at the idea of discussing mechanisms of evolution that were not adaptationists. Yet strangely, Camara and King and Jukes didn't seem to give the impression that they were overthrowing neo-Darwinism, but merely adding to the roster of mechanisms underlying it. Okay, let's skip ahead a bit here. I don't want to go over everything in this article. It's terrible. Okay. So, who's responsible for this nonsense? Well, the primary source for all of this is the rhetoric of Kevin Leyland, who is a legitimate biologist, and he has been doing credible work. But he has this unseemly obsession of getting credit for renaming of neo-Darwinism to the extended evolutionary synthesis. This thing. I really don't get it. Especially in light of this remark. Okay, right here. Leyland says, this is an update to the mid-20th century modern synthesis, which patched up neo-Darwinian theory with then-modern information. Since then, understanding of complexity has grown such that Leyland and others believe EES or another supplement is necessary to keep up. It is not a replacement or rejection of neo-Darwinism, but can be deployed alongside, alongside it as a way to understand key processes of nature. The theory neglects that it neglects. Huh. Okay, fine. Correct. It's not going to replace the existing understanding of evolution, but they say simply going to supplement it. But, but that's how evolutionary theory works already. And it's, it's an expanding body of ideas and mechanisms. Scientists are continually doing work within the framework of evolution. That's what a theory is, an explanatory framework and building on prior work to increase our understanding of the multitude of processes. It's really bizarre that Leyland pretends that existing evolutionary theory is so rigid that it cannot accommodate new ideas when he's just mentioned neutral theories, if it doesn't count. When 50 years ago, this standard evolutionary theory thing he's complaining about was flexible enough to include a body of non-Darwinian processes in evolution. <sighs> None of the things Leyland and his group complain about not getting their due. Things like Evo Devo, and I love Evo Devo, or epigenetics, or niche construction, or phenotypic plasticity, he suggests that these are all denied a place in evolutionary theory. But they're not. They're emerging parts of the story. And the demand is simply that they meet the same standards of evidence as all the other bits that have flowered in the orchard of, of evolutionary biology. It might also help if Leyland and his friends understood the basic components of evolutionary theory, which he gives no, no evidence of doing. The real problem here is that Leyland and his pals consistently mischaracterize evolutionary theory as mere random mutation plus natural selection. If you've been following the creationists for as long as I have, you know that's one of their mantras. The EES crowd is beloved by the creationists for reinforcing their ignorance with these scientists' own failure to understand evolutionary theory. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. But this is where that article goes next, segueing naturally into an endorsement of outright creationism. So let's scroll down a little farther, skip a lot of that garbage. Okay, there we go. A growing minority, all right. 
So after publishing in Nature, uh, it says that uh, Leyland received more than 1,000 emails and support from the academic community. I am not impressed by this. Seriously, if you go to the academic community who studies evolutionary biology and you say, hey, epigenetics is really important. We should study more of that, shouldn't we? You're, that's the response you're going to get. A lot of us will say, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool stuff. It doesn't necessarily require a revision of existing theory, but yes, it's valuable, interesting material. We should be studying that. Okay. But here we go, running off into the weeds. So, Mr. Dierker, thank you for this. What nonsense. Anyway, uh, first thing I have to clear up is this bit right here. Uh, Stephen Jay Gould was not a skeptic of evolutionary theory, and that's an egregious misreading of Gould, and it's libel to associate him with Michael Denton, who is just another creationist. And then, oh boy, oh boy. Look where we go next. All right, here in the past decade, the works of Professor Michael Behe, Stephen Meyer, and others. Um, hmm. Th those are not legitimate sources. Behe is still trying to refute evolutionary theory with his claim that any trait that required two or more mutations is impossible. And at this point, he's nothing more than a fringe crank who might once have stirred up uh, thorough rebuttals of his claims, but is now so tired and unoriginal and wrong that no one cares anymore. Meyer is a pompous philosopher who makes overblown claims about complexity in his boring book, Signature in the Cell. <sighs> Neither of these have any credibility left. This is Discovery Institute crap, and it was shot down in the Kitzmiller trial years ago, in part assisted by Kevin Padian, who's completely ne neglected in the story. And, and there's no reason to think that these are particularly good rebuttals of evolutionary theory. And it's really weird that they can that scientists can look at all this changing biodiversity and emergence of complexity in the fossil record and in the genes, and yet these creationists look at it all and say, natural processes have never been observed to produce such results. It's all very peculiar and all very circular because no matter what natural event they're shown, they're, they will insist that there had to have been an intelligent design elf lurking invisibly in the scene. Okay, but hey, let's get to the actual source of that claim about one-third, and there it is. Behe, Michael Behe, says, based on conversations with my own colleagues, etc., and news stories and journals, I would guesstimate that a third or more biologists are quite skeptical that Darwin's theory explains all of biology. Wow. And they also bring in Paul Nelson. Paul Nelson is a young earth creationist. And he's kind of weird, actually. Um, and he's supporting BE by saying, oh, well, he had bar conversations with people over a couple of beers. That's, that's the entire quantitative source of this claim. And it's, it's also based fundamentally on a misunderstanding of evolutionary theory because, like I said earlier, Darwin's theory is not modern evolutionary biology. We do not use Darwin as a textbook even. Okay. I guess we can also settle a lot of conversations here because I've had conversations at atheist conferences with ex-Christians and they all say that religion is really stupid. I guess we're done. Religion is really stupid. All I gotta do is take the word of a few people over beer. Okay, but that's that's Nelson and that's Behe. They're they're twits. Okay, uh, but the thing is, uh, Leyland isn't helping either. Look here. So Leyland notes, I think the number numbers issue depends strongly on subtle details. 
I would argue with that. It's not subtle details uh, of how you frame the question. A good proportion would probably agree that the causal bases of evolution are more complex than commonly portrayed in the textbooks. Uh, okay, yeah, that's, that is true. I will guarantee you that. I will tell you that 100% of evolutionary biologists would say evolution is more complex than it is being portrayed in the textbooks. Textbooks are not the cutting edge of evolutionary theory. They're always lagging a few years behind the literature, and they often have to give a simplified version of the story. But even more, all scientists would probably be willing to say that evolution is far more complex than what you'll find in Darwin's Origin of the Species. That book might be taught in some history courses, but not in straight biology courses. Okay, but the bottom line of all this is that Dierker is just another in a long line of merchants of doubt. He finds a few scientists and a few cranks, and he's ready to spin out this claim that Darwinism or Neo-Darwinism or the theory of evolution He's so vague in his understanding, it's hard to tell which is facing serious challenge. It's not. That's simply a lie from an ignoramus writing for the Federalist. Internal criticism and exploration of new ideas is what normal, healthy science does. Yeah, so he's got a lot, of, lot more here. He mentions a third way. The third way is another... The third way is is a terrible sight because it includes some really smart people, some good people who are doing credible research in evolutionary biology, and it includes some real crackpots, and they're all mingled together. Uh, it's it's not something that's ever impressed me, but okay. So here we have, uh, here's this guy saying, the plain truth from the literature, conferences, expert perception, and a bit of anecdote, yeah, a lot of anecdote, is that current neo-Darwinism is far from the untouchable theory it is lauded to be. That is such a bizarre statement because nobody has ever claimed that neo-Darwinism is untouchable. It is not an iron-clad law that you cannot argue with. Never has been, never will be. It's a dynamic theory that encompasses a large body of phenomena and that requires an immense amount of work to understand and explain. It's not one thing, as I said earlier. It's a whole bunch of things. Uh, other things that Dierker says that are kind of absurd is adding in supporters of intelligence, intelligent design, which is religion neutral. This is more bullshit. It's not religion neutral. Again, to mention the Kitzmiller trial, that's they determined there that this was just a sneaky way to smuggle religion into the schools. Uh, Meyer and Behe are both religious people. So this this is just pretending that intelligent design is not religiously based when it really is. Okay, and then at the end he says, okay, the goal is not to abandon Darwin, but to retire him. Darwin has been dead for a while, okay. I, I think he's pretty well retire, retired. But retire him to make way for more coherent, comprehensive theories, which is what neo-Darwinism -Darwin, is and what the current expanding theory of evolution is. Uh, it's, a current, it's a coherent, comprehensive theory. It doesn't cover everything, so we need to do more work. But it is definitely a coherent, co comprehensive theory, unlike the nonsense from the intelligent design crowd. Okay. I just had to get that off my chest. It, it really is a terrible article. Uh, but then they, they always are. And I am so disappointed because I would have liked to have I would have liked to have seen some discussion of Kevin Padian's work. He's a smart guy. He said some really interesting things and has been awarded for it. Uh, but no, I guess that I guess that was just the cheating teaser they threw up there to make us think this is worthwhile, as well as that little word there, science. There was no science in this article. 
Okay. Back to it. Talk to y'all later. I'm sure there will be other horrible creationist articles that I'll have to dissect. <laughs>